um, let us recall what we have been doing so far. I mean our eventual aim is to describe um, a scattering of particles <coughs> and, and tell what happens in future after these particles have interacted and towards that goal we have been uh, trying to figure out S matrix elements which are basically the inner products of in and out states and we had made significant progress in that direction and found that we can write um, S matrix element which we write as S of this P 1 to P n and K 1 to K n K m. So, in general m and n will be different. Okay. We showed that this is equal to i over square root of z and you have m plus n such factors sorry m such factors okay. and then you have integral d 4 x 1 to d 4 x m then f of k 1 x 1 times f of k 2 x 2 and so forth to f of k m x m okay, times box 1 plus m p square. Okay. This is basically del mu del mu where the derivative is with respect to x 1. Okay. So, and then other factors box m plus m p square okay, times p 1 to p n that is the out state then time order product of these fields phi at x 1 phi at x 2 so and so forth phi at x m and here you have the vacuum. Okay. We could um, write our expression in terms of fields phi and could uh, completely get rid of the in state and instead we have now vacuum. Now, if you were to repeat similar steps for the out state this one here. Okay, then you are going to get the following and that is something you can you should check. So, you are going to get in addition to this factor i over square root of z to the m <coughs> you are going to get n such factors also. So, you will get this then you are going to get um, f of p 1 x 1, but this time it will be a complex conjugate p m sorry p n x n and a complex conjugation here times you will have these uh, differential operators also for um, just like you have box 1 plus m p square let me put a label x here because now we have both uh, sorry I, I made a small mistake. So, here you will have corresponding uh, integration variables which we will write as d 4 y 1 d 4 y n and these will have arguments y 1 to y n and these derivatives which are uh, with respect to x 1 and x 2 and so forth I will explicitly write them as box with subscript x 1 and this one is box with subscript x m. 
okay meaning this differential operator del mu del mu this del mu is basically del uh, so this is this that is the box. So, here it is del over del x m mu ok. This is the derivative operator here. So, that is what we have in here and um, when we are getting rid of this out state we will have just like these differential operators we will have box y 1 <coughs> plus m p square. So, now this box which is again del mu del mu the derivative is with respect to y 1 mu okay. and we have several of them up to box y n plus m p square and of course, this will get changed to let me. So, this I will erase and let us see whether I can erase. So, this I will remove I think if I, yeah this works. and this does not go away. Okay. And then what will you have? We had time order product of um, fields where the number of fields was equal to the number of labels k 1 uh, the number of labels we had in the in state which was m labels. But now, we are going to get in addition to those n more fields coming from the out state and we will have uh, um, this time order product of phi um, x 1 up to phi x m that we already had and now we will also have phi of y 1 to phi of y n okay. and we will have this vacuum expectation value of this time order product. Okay, so, this is our LSZ reduction formula. and we have missed these factors of um, here we had square root of 2 omega k 1 uh, for x 1 and similarly for other variables. So, I should multiply this somewhere um, how should I write here 2 omega k i product i equal to 1 to m times j equal to 1 to um, n to omega k j. Okay. So, this also should be multiplied. So, I will put a cross here, so that it equation starts from this place. I am sorry that this is not looking so nice, but this is what it is. Okay. So, that is our LSZ reduction formula. Now, you see that these objects, this um, vacuum expectation value of this time order product, that is what is a green function is right. We have talked in detail about this and perturbative expansion of this object in the previous course part 1 of this uh, uh, lecture on corner field theory and, um, and and you may recall that we can also write this um, using momentum space variables. Okay. So, uh, and we saw perturbation expansion of this how to draw Feynman diagrams this is what led us to Feynman diagrams. 
okay, and you should uh, uh, you go back to the previous course and see uh, what we learned about all this, but I am not going to go back to that discussion and I will assume that you already know what these objects are okay, and I am going to proceed with that. Okay. So, um, let me just write down here these are our correlation functions or Green's functions. Okay, this is what we used to call this one will be g n plus m x 1 to x m then y 1 to y n. Okay. That was the notation which we used last time a bit standard notation actually. So, now my plan is to further manipulate this and put it in a uh, nice form. Yeah. And before I do that I will also just remind you what f of k is. this was 1 over 2 pi 3 over 2 and then you had 1 over 2 mega k in the square root. <laughs> okay, that was the definition. So, you see here that you have let us look at x variables let us look at x 1. Okay. You have d 4 x 1 okay, that is the uh, measure, <coughs> then you have f k of x 1. Now, in f k of x 1, if you look at the expression here f k of x, the dependence on x is fairly simple okay, or this is just e to the minus i k dot x. Okay. So, th this thing is also you can write this as. minus i k dot x <coughs> which is k mu x mu <coughs> and 0th component is omega omega k that is the energy. Okay. So, as far as x dependence is concerned in f k that is simple that is an exponential. Okay. Integrating d for uh, integrating this exponential over this uh, variable x 1 that is simple okay, that will give you a delta function. The only problem is that you have this differential operator acting on this uh, Green's function which is also a function of x 1. Okay. But what I am going to do is turn this into a simple expression so that I can integrate easily over x 1 and x 2 and so forth. And uh, the idea is that instead of working with this Green's function in the coordinate space okay i will go to fourier space okay so i will fourier transform these variables this, this function uh, with respect to these variables okay and once i fourier transform the x dependence will become simple it will be a simple exponential function okay then taking this derivative operator and acting on a simple exponential function is easy it will give you back the uh, that exponential function times some constants and then I can just integrate out over x 1 or any of the x i's or y i's. Okay. So, that is the plan okay. and, and the reason being simple because the if I go to Fourier space the x dependence trivially factors out as an exponential okay. and that is why I am going to go to Fourier space. So, let us see uh, what happens when we do that. Okay. Good. So, I will define the Fourier transform. So, let us define g tilde. So, let us say I have some 
um, some number of uh, I mean a function g tilde which depends on ok let me first write then I will say it's, it will be easier ok. So, I am defining the Fourier transform of g tilde of x 1 x 2 so and so forth up to x s. So, g tilde of s k s is defined to be d 4 x 1 e to the minus i k 1 dot x 1 ok integral d 4 x 2 e to the minus i k 2 dot x 2. So, and so forth integral d 4 x s e to the minus i k s dot x s time and this this Fourier transform is being done on g s x 1 to x s. Okay. So, given a, a correlation function or a Green's function okay, which is uh, a function of these x 1 to x s uh, coordinates, I do a Fourier transform of each of these uh, I mean I do a Fourier transform a multi dimensional Fourier transform okay, and the conjugate variables corresponding to x 1 to x s are k 1 to k s and that is the general Fourier transform that you will write okay, which is same as d 4 x 1 to d 4 x s times e to the minus i k 1 x 1 plus so and so forth k x dot x s k 1 dot x okay acting on g s x 1 to x s. Now, you see this is what I was saying. If I now write g s x 1 to x s in terms of g tilde okay, where it depends on these conjugate variables uh, k 1 to k s then the x dependence will be simple. So, I invert this and write g s ok I am just writing the inverse Fourier transform now this is d 4 k 1 over 2 pi to the 4 so and so forth d 4 k s over 2 pi to the 4 then you have e to the plus i k 1 dot x 1 so and so forth k s dot x s times g tilde s k 1 to k s. Okay. So, you see now if I go back and substitute in here this is g okay, substitute in this expression the Fourier transform or, or not the Fourier transform, but this expression okay, where g tilde s is the Fourier transform of g s then the x dependence is simple it is of the exponential form. Okay. So, that is what I want to do um, and another thing is that um, just a second hmm. I think I had written here itself yeah and another thing is that this um, these differential operators act simply on the on the exponentials. Okay. So, let us so for this thing let us call this as g n plus m okay, and these variables and I do the similar thing. So, I will have um, these all these exponentials both with x, x and y and then I take derivatives. So, let us look at first this one box x 1 plus m p square acting on the x uh, x dependence coming from here. Okay. So, if you do so let us look at box x 1 plus m p square acting on g m plus n 
and then you have x m and y 1 to y n. Okay. This will give you what? This will give you back Yeah, apart from see all these um, integrals are still there, I will not write them in full, but you have all these integrals. Okay. Then this exponential will give you k 1 minus k 1 square plus m p square times again the same exponential times g tilde. Okay. Why? Because the box x 1 is basically del mu del mu right with respect to x 1 variable. So, when this x del mu acts on e to the i k 1 dot x 1 it pulls down i k 1 mu. Then you again act with another del mu it again pulls out i k 1 mu ok 1 mu will be up 1 mil, mu will be down and i times i gives you a minus 1 and k mu k mu is k square. So, you get minus k square plus m p square. Okay, when you take this the differential operator and act on g. So, if you do this same thing for each of the uh, coordinates x all of these x coordinates and all of the y coordinates, then you will get the following result. So, instead of writing that let me just collect all the terms. So, what I will do is okay, I will write uh, one more time this thing <coughs> can I copy all this ok let us let us write it again it will be easier to uh, see what is coming from where that way. So, s of p 1 to p n k 1 to k m okay, is equal to i over square root of z m plus n then d 4 x 1 d 4 x m d 4 x y 1 d 4 y n then you have the f case f k m x m ok times f p 1 y 1 to f p n y n then all these differential operators ok I will um, I will write it in the following manner. So, the 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 variables which I will use is when I am transforming um, this g. So, corresponding to x 1 I will write uh, k 1 prime okay. and for x m I will write k m prime and for y 1 I will write p 1 prime and y n I am saying about the conjugate variables okay. for y n I will write p n prime. So, you will get the following this times um, d 4 k 1 prime over 2 pi to the 4 d 4 k m prime over 2 pi to the 4 ok. This is coming from here right. I am I am substituting g um, in this expression this one this g in terms of Fourier transform and this brings this integration measures ok. I am just putting a label prime on this that is all I am doing. And then similarly for the y 
y 1 to y m I will have d 4 p 1 prime d 4 p n prime over 2 pi to the 4 okay. and then these exponentials these exponentials. Okay. So, you will have um, e to the let me write here e to the i summation over i k i prime dot x i or if you wish let me let me write it like this k 1 x 1 k 1 prime x 1 plus so and so forth k m prime x m prime x m okay. and then you have e to the i um, p 1 prime dot y 1 p n prime dot y n and then finally, g tilde that is the Fourier transform and the arguments are k 1 prime to k m prime p 1 prime to p n <coughs> prime. Okay. Did we miss something? Yes, we did and that is these differential operators. right? I have written everything else except for these differential operators. Now, when these differential operators act on the g, g, they pull out these factors, such factors, right? Minus k 1 square plus m p square minus k 2 square plus m p square. So, that is what is left and I should write here um, minus k 1 square plus m p square minus k m square plus m p square times minus and that is prime okay, k 1 prime k m prime minus p 1 prime square plus m p square so and so forth minus p n prime square plus m p square and again I have forgotten to write down 2 omega k 1 2 omega k m square root of 2 omega k m then square root of 2 omega p 1 p n. Okay. So, that is the result when you express things in terms of um, g tilde. Okay. Good. Now, now let us settle x integral okay. and then y integral of course and that is easy. Remember, let us see where all the x dependence is. So, x dependence is in here, then in here. These are the only two places where you have x dependence. Okay. So, let us um, write down what you get for um, d 4 x 1. Okay. So, you will get in integral d 4 x 1, then you get e to the what was it e to the minus i k dot x okay so f k x1 is e to the minus i k1 dot x1 Just a second, there is some sign issue.
Okay, just a second. Is this correct? F k x one, F k x. Let's check. Toolbar. No, not this. I want to see what is the expression of f k of x 1. Okay, anyhow, I will check the sign and then I will tell you in the next video, but let me tell you what I was about to do or what I am going to do. <coughs> there is some uh, discrepancy in sign compared to my notes, but let us proceed anyway. So, this will have 1 over um, 2 pi 3 halves. and 2 omega k 1 okay, that is f k 1 uh, x 1 and then you have another x dependence coming from here times e to the i k 1 dot x 1 k 1 prime dot x 1 okay. that is all that is all for x 1. Now, this one you can integrate out and it will give you 1 over 2 pi 3 halves 1 over 2 omega k 1 Okay. And this exponential, this will give you integral over uh, upon integrating, it will give you 2 pi to the 4 delta 4 of minus k 1 plus k 1 prime. Okay. That is what you will get. And uh, pending this issue of sign, which I am facing, you are going to um, get this that is the delta function you are going to get. Okay. And then similarly you will get for each of the um, x variables and also for the y variables. Okay. And once you have gotten a delta function integrating over k 1 uh, prime and k 2 prime and p 1 prime and p 2 prime that will be easy. So, that will be the next step. Okay. But uh, before I do that I want to check my sign and then we will continue in the next video. Okay, so, I checked and I do not find any problem with signs actually. So, this is fine let us proceed. Um, so, I was doing the x integral. Okay, just a second. Yeah. So, I have um, collected all the factors which contain x 1 okay, and the result is that you have an integral over d 4 x 1 e to the minus i k 1 dot x 1 over this factor coming from f k 1 this is what I wrote and then you have this exponential coming from here e to the i k 1 prime dot x 1. Okay. So, you will get these factors which are in the denominator and when you integrate over x 1 you generate a delta function with the factor of 2 pi to the 4. So, that is 2 pi to the 4 delta 4 and k 1 prime minus k 1 okay? which means that this delta function hits only when k 1 prime is equal to k 1. Okay? So, this dummy variable k 1 prime when it equals the variable k 1 which is what is present in this S matrix element then it contributes otherwise its contribution is 0. 
okay and as you can see that you will get uh, similar factors for each of the um, each of the xi so each of um, yeah okay so for example for x2 i will have exactly the same thing with uh, omega k1 replaced by omega k2 and this will have delta 4 minus k2 plus k2 prime okay so that's one thing so we have taken care of integrals over x1 so i will write down on the next sheet um, just a second yeah so each of the or rather integrating over xi gives um, 1 over 2 pi 3 halves times 1 over 2 omega ki in the square roots and then you have this factor 2 pi to the 4 delta 4 I will write it as k1 prime minus k1. Okay. <coughs> These are 4 vectors. Now let us look at y integrals integration over y i. Let us go back. So here you have Okay, there is a again a small mistake here. So I should show you that we had the P ones, F P one, they had a complex conjugation, which is what is missing here. So I'll put this complex conjugation here. Okay. Now because of complex conjugation, F P one would have instead of e to the minus i p one dot x y one, it will have e to the i p one dot y1 okay <coughs> that's the difference with respect to the previous case for the case of x1 okay the this uh, this sign instead of being minus will be a plus okay other factors are going to be the same and then you have e to the i p1 prime dot y1 okay so the sign of this factor in the case of y1 doesn't change so what will we get is there will be a uh, change of sign here. So, instead of minus p1 here, we will have p1. Okay. So, for y1, I will get 1 over 2 pi 3 halves, 1 over 2 omega p1 in the square roots, in the square root and then 2 pi to the 4 delta 4 <coughs> minus p1 plus p1 prime. That is what you are going to get. Okay. So, you will get 1 over 2 pi 3 halves and then okay, I have changed the um, this nib of this pen and I think I should make it bolder brush library yeah. Let us hope this is better. Okay. Then 2 pi to the 4 delta 4 and then we have sorry here it should have been i um, p i prime plus p i. Okay. Which means when p i prime is equal to minus p i okay, then this delta function hits. Okay. And this delta function hits when k i prime is equal to k i. Okay, so now we can substitute all this um, into our formula for the S matrix and obtain the following. So, what happens? We'll have these factors. Okay, i over square root of z m plus n. 
then you have all this uh, root 2 omega k i, but then that root 2 omega k i Okay, that will get cancelled. See, each of these uh, f k i, they are bringing a factor of 1 over root 2 omega k i. Okay? So, that gets cancelled with this <coughs> root 2 omega k i because of the normalizations that we chose, okay, which brought these factors. So, each of these root 2 omega k i's are going to disappear. There will be no square root of omega 2 omega k i in this. Okay? Then all the x and y integrals are gone, these f's, f's are gone. Okay. Integral over um, d 4 k 1 they will be left okay. and then of course, these, these objects are there. So, let me write down and then let us check um, maybe on the next sheet. So, I have found that um, s P one to P n and then K one to K m. Okay. That is equal to square root of z m plus n. Okay then we will have um, each of um, these x integrals brings 1 over 2 pi 3 halves. Okay? So, we will have m such factors coming from x i integrals and n such factors coming from uh, p i integrals. Okay? So, let me keep that. Okay. So, I have taken care of uh, these 2 pi 3 halves and also these square root of 2 omega <coughs> k i's or rather from here I should be looking here this have been taken care of. Now, I will have um, 2 pi to the 4 times the de these delta functions coming okay. and I should take this and um, see these 2 pi to the 4. Okay, let, let me go slow. So, here look at so the, these factors have been taken care of. Now, let us look at this. I will integrate over uh, this over d4 k1 prime. Okay. So, look at this. This has d4 k1 prime over 2 pi to the 4. So, that 2 pi to the 4 cancels that this one. Okay, and you are left with only this delta function. So, you have d 4 k 1 prime times the delta function okay, and then the k 1 prime appears here in this factor minus k 1 prime square plus m p square okay. and then the other place is here g tilde m plus n okay, here k 1 prime. So, what I should do is all the 2 pi factors are gone all I have to do is turn k 1 prime into k 1 okay, because that is what this delta function does. So, here I will have minus k 1 square plus m p square instead of minus k 1 prime square plus m p square. Here it will be this is anyway already taken care of this will be this will become k 1 okay. and when I do for uh, p 1 I should again the same thing all these 2 pi to the 4 factors are gone, but this time the delta function is p 1 prime is equal to min, uh, I mean the delta function forces p 1 prime to be equal to minus p 1. 
So, what will happen is here instead of P1 prime, I will have minus P1. So, these first m labels get changed to K1, K2, so and so forth Km and these n labels get changed to minus P1, minus P2, so and so forth to minus Pn. Okay, so, that is the replacement that uh, we need to make. So, I am going to write this result. Um, <coughs> this is fine. Then I have product of did I write like that? No. So, I will write it as um, let us go back. What was that? Minus k1 square plus mp square. So, minus k1 square plus mp square times other terms and the last term is last factor is m um, k m square plus m p square. Okay. Then I have minus p 1 prime square plus m p square, but p 1 I should p 1 prime I should replace by minus p 1, but when I square it of course, the sign uh, change does not matter. So, I get minus p 1 square plus m p square, so and so forth and the last factor is minus p n square plus m p square. Okay. Then what is left is g tilde and here you will have k 1 up to k m and then <coughs> minus p 1 up to minus p n. Okay. Where um, remember that these energies p 1 p i 0 is same as okay, p i the 0th component of uh, p is just the energy um, which is um, Okay, and similarly for k i 0. Okay, that is the constraint you have on these on this momenta four momenta. Okay, so this is all all good. Okay. Not here, I mean, it, sorry, this I should not put it continues in the next line. Okay. So, now let us look at these factors. Okay. So, if it looks like when my um, when these momenta p 1 to p n and k 1 to k m they are on shell, okay, on shell meaning they satisfy. Uh, let us say for k 1, k 1 square is m p square okay, that is the condition of being on shell, then this factor is 0. Okay. Similarly, all these factors will be 0 when the corresponding moment are on shell. Okay. So, looks like that uh, the asymmetric is 0 for that, which of course, it cannot be true that you know there is no transition probability, uh, the transition probability from uh, in state with all these momenta to an out state with all the p i's is 0. Okay. That, that cannot happen because of course, you know that scattering will happen. So, clearly this these zeros okay, they should be killed by some poles coming from here. Okay. That is the only way you can save this otherwise it will not work. Okay. Otherwise, it will give you 0. So, um, the way uh, it works is the following. Okay, I'll prove it in detail later, but I'll tell you what happens. Um, if you look at a two-point function in an interacting theory, 
okay let's say there is momentum k1 okay then <coughs> this two point function which of course has all all these diagrams in there okay which we have done previously um with, let's let me draw a few so for example this is this plus this i'm just drawing in five four theory this and and many other diagrams infinite of them okay these are all diagrams which have only two external uh, points this and this and when you look at this function when you look at this two point greens function okay then its behavior is given by this let's call it k not k1 plus other terms that doesn't bother right now that doesn't bother us right now so thing is that see if k square is very close to the physical mass squared meaning if if the momentum is close to being on shell then the claim is that the leading behavior of this two point function is given by this term other terms are not that singular meaning you have a pole in the two point function okay and pole is at the physical mass right so if you are looking at this object in the k square plane okay so if you are looking at the complex plane of k square Okay. then there is a pole at the physical mass so whatever that physical mass of particles is okay there is a pole here okay so this is the dominant behavior and this is what is going to save us that it, actually this this these poles will get cancel against these zeros which you see here okay and i will show you uh, in the next video how that happens but for now we will uh, this i will assume okay and later in the video after once we have done this s matrix formula completely i will show you how you, how to obtain uh, this result explicitly okay so see you in the next video